and welcome to the channel. I am Wendy. This is Wendy's Pet Salon and this is my little home grooming salon. At my home. What is a pet groomer? A pet groomer is about so many different skills. We check the dog, we wash them, we clip them, we learn all the different breeds, all the different traditional styles, coat types, behavior, um, first aid, skin conditions, um, dealing with fleas, oh, not dealing with fleas, um, yeah, mom. Uh, and you know, all those symptoms of those diseases and things like that that you may crop up in the time that you're grooming. Um, so yeah, sounds really small, doesn't it? But what actually is a dog groomer or a pet groomer? Um, scratching, biting, pooing, wing in your salon um matted dogs dogs that um make a lot of noise um distressed dogs working with a dog for 18 months trying um to get the owners to work with you to try and improve that dog's behavior only when you refuse that dog again because they're not working with you or because you're constantly getting bitten by it and because they're constantly bringing it back matted um, to be given a one star um, for all your help. <laughs> it is um, people not wanting to pay the charges is to leave you over a three pound or five pound um, increase in your prices. Customers turning up early so you don't get a chance to have a wee because you don't want to leave the dogs unattended or maybe not getting anything to eat or if you do by the time you get it it's covered in hairs and you've got lots of hairs in your drink. Dogs pooing in the bath, dogs pooing on the table, um, sometimes spitting a bit of anal juice or down your top. Constantly cleaning, constantly hoovering, wiping, disinfectanting, maintaining your equipment throughout the day. Not taking any notice when the customer says, oh, what, what, what have they done to you? Dog saliva snotted in your face. Pulling hairs out of your eyes and from the back of your throat um, and even sometimes in other areas. Hair splinters. Customers coming late and it has a complete knock-on effect on the whole of your day, especially when you're a one-to-one -one groomer and you don't have areas to put them and only a, a certain window of time to work with. Having random thoughts, sat down watching the telly as if, did you do Jimbo's Dew Claws? I can't remember doing them. Did I do them? Getting bitten so badly that um, the infection spreads into your bloodstream and you nearly die. Getting a bite and needing a tetanus injection, which is awful because it's like you've been punched in your arm and you can't continue the rest of the day and you have no money. Getting a general illness, such like COVID or strep throat or any other kind of illness that puts you in your bed. Um, and having to have time off work, which you are not paid for. Customers booking appointments and just not turning up 
then you lose your money. Owners refusing to have their dogs clipped off short, even though they are matted. Or customers that make appointments and cancel minutes before their appointment, you can't get that money back. And then they don't want to pay a cancellation fee um, because you, you're going to lose out massively. Um, no, they'll go somewhere else and probably do that same thing. Dealing with rude people. I have 156 fantastic customers and they treat me with the most utmost respect and I truly, truly appreciate that. Pet grooming is a luxury service and it's a service that we offer because you can't do it yourself. It's a fantastic service and a profession that's not for everybody, but it's wonderful. If it was that easy, everybody would do it. But apart from all that, a pet groomer is a very patient, wonderful person <laughs> who takes care of your pets in, in the best way that they possibly can. So hello and welcome, welcome to all the subscribers and if you are new, welcome on board. Monday is the day when I do a little bit of a catch up. So as you know, I had a bit of a week off. Um, I have a full cat day today. Unfortunately, one cat won't be able to come because the lady has tested positive this morning for COVID, so she can't bring him. Um, and um, I'll just go through what I've got on this week. So I've got a busy, busy cat day today. So we've got one minus the one that's not coming. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine cats today, um, none of which will be having a bath or anything like that. They're all just groomed, and anticipated nails, etc. Um, I've got a poodle, which is not kept like a poodle. She's more like a cockapoo. Um, I've got Dylan, I've got um, the terriers, the three terriers that come, another border terrier, a little Yorkie, a Westie, standard poodle who's very elderly, um, a little Yorkshire terrier who she is very elderly, uh, Wilbur Harper who's Cavalier, um, a Maltese Cross, Upper Jack Russells, I've got a hamstrick border terrier, I've got lovely Shelby, the standard poodle, and I've got little Shih Tzu. So I've got plenty this week again. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was just a quick little bit of, um, of a bit of an update. So I had a little week off just to refresh. I haven't forgotten about all the other things that I said I was gonna do, like um, I was gonna talk through my um, course etc i'm going to get that down from the loft and i'll do a day where i'm talking through exactly what i did on my um fast track grooming um so i did a little bit of a video the back end of last week which was marvin the cockapoo bless him he is um lively <laughs> <laughs> and very noisy and his mum um sent me a, me a message after she'd watched the video and i did have a giggle because she said um well i've watched the video and i have to say you need a medal um a glass of wine and a lie down probably in that order <laughs> Um, but yeah, th this is um, the joys of pet grooming, you know. Um, unfortunately, you know, like when you go to the hairdressers, you sit down in the chair and you have a little bit of chat about your holiday. You might have a cup of tea, you have your hair washed and you, you very well behave when you have your hair washed, you know, you just like that. You just, you know. 
and then you know holidays where they house everything yeah and you're probably you know in there i know i'm not in there probably 40 minutes an hour maybe something like that um cost me 95 pounds <laughs> um and they deserve every penny they're self-employed people and um that's their bag um which brings me on to one of the reasons why i had a little bit of a time off because um not just because of my personality and the way i am but it affects many many groomers um i know it does because the forums are full of people saying this and it, it is a, a a big topic um and it does seem that a lot of us groomers suffer with the same types of thing um and they do feel that we're, we're sort of undervalued as um a profession you know um there is a vast uh, difference throughout the board you know my journey is my journey and um, my experience my training my is 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 mine and another person may for instance not have had any training maybe done an online course maybe only charging 15 pounds um and maybe only doing one dog a, a day or a week um then you've got the other side you've got salons that have got massive overheads they're paying they want to pay a decent a decent a decent wage they've got massive overheads like i say the larger the place the more rates you are going to to pay um you only get rate relief on a small area anything bigger you you've got a rateable value on that um you know water electric that's just your overheads and then you've got everything else that goes with it our equipment you know as well your whole setup depending on how many staff that you've got um and and then you might have um somebody that's you know done a course um i mean because let's face it courses now to do a full course where you you know which is probably up to about 26 days um you know you could be paying over four thousand up to seven thousand pound for a course you know um i was lucky i did mine when i left school so i spent a whole year after school building up that and i'd had experience beforehand but you know that's how i built mine um now if you're wanting to go into this industry you know properly um you know you do a course you're learning you obviously i go through everything that i did like breakdown of the things you're that I gonna like. learn um you know how to groom a dog your first aid um you know lot, lots of things over there but it's not a lot um you know it, it is just the basics and then you have to um go away and have your experience and, and build that up over time some people are fortunate to work in a salon so they can bounce off other people and do a lot more learning um others you know like myself work at home so you maybe don't have the access to get extra um thing you just learning off you go um but it's not it it's not a lot um really it, it is just the basics um but you've still got to pay for that course um so you know if people are, are working in salons and they're putting you through these courses and putting you through to do you know your higher um qualifications and things like that that costs money as well so you know people are investing in you I was fortunate, I went to college, my situation, I went to college, I learned over a year, I was able to go um, work for other people, work in people's houses, and I built my experience up like that, until I felt ready, well, I probably wasn't quite ready, even though I'd done it for some years, you know, um, and going back, 
um oh ladies early this morning i thought i had an extra 10 minutes but never mind <laughs> yeah so going going back to what i was saying going back um you know i was very fortunate to be able to learn in the way that i did and even sort of um early on in my salon times i did a little bit of competition i did a little bit of showing my dog and um it just all adds to you you different experience and and stuff like that um because we we want to be good at what we do um this job is so hard and um you know you you really need all all the help you can get so i think when some person who has no experience has no insurance has no first aid no experience hasn't done any form of you know training then comes along in your local area and wants to charge 15 pounds you know and it's kind of uh, i don't know what you might call it but it just seems a little bit unfair doesn't it because many of us have invested so much into our um careers and you know we, we've built up our experience over the time and you know we want to do a really good professional job and we've we're insured and we've done some training and um we've done our first aid and you know we're we're here trying to give the best service that you know that we possibly can and then what happens is like what happened to me last week it just came out of the blue um i am for my skill set and the amount of you know experience that i have and stuff like that my price is very reasonable um some of the commercial places maybe charge you know um i mean they do charge extras or mine's included but you know you're talking five to ten pound more than me um so yeah anyway so my my prices i start from a small dog so say a shih tzu and i know lots of you know groomers that have maybe comment on this um i start from 41 pounds um now why am i only charging that well basically i can charge that because all my dogs come regular um i can do them in an hour and a half small dog um and it's from so that is for a shortcut so you might get a short cute face but it's all off and the tail still a lot of skill involved in that they might be you know a bit dodgy for the feet and the nails but you we still do them that's a skill that we're able to offer you know if you you know you might have to go to the vets and pay another 18 20 odd pounds to have your nails trimmed so it's all included and you know the my my dogs come between six and eight weeks i don't do one-off dogs so i'm not adding more um things like to my equipment you know because they're coming in a really good condition so you know and it's so much better for the dog so I start, so obviously if you wanted um you know uh more of a style you know you wanted more shapely legs and stuff we're, we're gonna go up we're gonna go up in price because it takes more skill uh, and more time to do that so then it goes up to a medium sized dog so medium so in between 41 and my next price um so medium is 50 pounds um now that's two hours of my time generally so if we're talking cockapoo size um it's two hours and that isn't for a you know a highly stylized dog that's a dog that may be on a three length all over uh, between six and eight weeks so i never can get there so 10 millimeters you know say 10 millimeters and also i've invested in that dog 
So not only am I doing the, the maintenance of that dog, but I've got to know that dog. I know how to do its nails. I know how it behaves, how to get round. I've built up that time. So for instance, Milo, you know, you're not just paying for my hourly rate, whatever, you're paying for my expertise. So there's, there's a lot going into that. Um, and then when I go to a large dog, I'm going um, from 55. Bear with me. There. Uh, just going to pick the cat up. So what was I saying? So um, large dogs, which I don't do many of now, and I won't be taking on any more. Uh, so, you know, my standard poodles are 60, and that is um, sort of a three hour time limit on it, and they're a short trim. So, you know, I might be doing a lamb trim. So short body and pretty short legs. The legs really don't go longer than a five, um, which is a, 16 millimeter should know this by now shouldn't I yeah so um 16 millimeter legs you know short short on the body um and it's easy for the dog especially when they get older um and as you know all my dogs that have been in my diary have been with me for absolutely yonks I mean talking years um I've actually got um, some dogs and cats that still come to me from my other area where I used to work which is in Warrington and uh, so they're traveling 30 miles to to me so I can't be all that bad but <laughs> um, yeah so uh, so I had a, I had a text message basically um, and the particular lady uh, who I have been grooming her dog for nine years because I've, I've been, that's how long I've been in Congleton grooming back in my hometown. Um, so she has a cockapoo. So it's £50 for a, a cockapoo. And sometimes she can go eight, sometimes 12 weeks, just depends on, on the diary because uh, she didn't have actually have a list um so she's uh messaged me and oh happy with the groom not a, not an issue and um unfortunately now she feels that it's too expensive and she isn't going to come anymore so <laughs> um but and that is absolutely her prerogative. It, I've no, I've no issue in that. But for me, when you've invested all that time into a dog, I mean, one, you miss them, and you know, you know about all their quirky ways. You know, this particular dog, she can be a little bit nervous. Um, she, it's took me years to be able to do the nails. And I can literally just tick them off now. Um, she does like to lean away from you. Um, she has a short trim, so it's not like she's having anything really, really fancy or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you, you've invested so much time and energy in, into that. And, you know, it's just over, what, £5 a week or whatever when you break it down like that and I, and I did put on the comment that uh, on my page about it and a lot of groomers and a lot of my customers actually commented and it, it, it for them it's not the price it's what they get you know what what they're getting and how the dog is and I understand that people can't afford it now we have come into an era now where the cost of living we're having to pinch every penny here, there and everywhere. I know I don't get paid a lot as a pet groomer and the reason, you know, I have a partner um, and I've cut down some of my overheads but I've still got this lovely building to pay for um, 
and um, so that's going to take me some years so you could say i am still paying rent <laughs> you know i am paying you know i might not pay as much overheads because i can only with working at home you can only use so much of your home um you know but i still need paying a wage so i mean i don't know say i'm not great at maths but you know if i'm on say 18 pounds an hour at my skill level it really doesn't leave me a lot over you know 36 pounds so you've got how, how much there um towards you know not just i mean it's not not even profit um the the shampoo that you use the equipment you use your scissors your upkeep of your scissors our equipment you know you're talking 300 pounds for one pair of clippers um you know we, we have invested all that 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 into that so i know that my price is pretty um competitive really um and you might go to another groomer and i'm thinking to myself and somebody did actually raise the point that you know they may be saving a fiver um and some people commented um you know they'd rather go without their own hair <laughs> um than not than miss the dogs so the, there's all sorts of things but it just really affected me really it really affected me because that is just just a long-term investment for for me and that's it you know people say oh well you shouldn't really um have those feelings but it's very hard not to take that personally um and but obviously it, i don't have any ill feeling towards the, the person it is completely their prerogative um but i am of the mindset that i wouldn't take that customer back um because i know that it's going to come to a point where you know even that person that you've gone to that's cheap um, they are going to have to raise their their prices accordingly. So it will come to a point where we're probably on par. So then are you going to come back? Doesn't seem very fair, does it? And the dog's getting mis me mixed messages. We all groom completely different. I have my routine. Um, so... You know, we're, we're all completely different. So it, it just it just threw me um really um and plus the fact that i've been doing all these um lists all these these are just some of them um ready for for next year just so that when my customers come um to create this the balance that i have over the year to make sure everybody gets you know is looked after i just want to make sure that they've got appointments throughout the year and it fits you know, um, because I don't want the dogs going over two, three weeks, then they become naughty, messy, you know, parts of the groom may be uncomfortable. I don't want to go backwards, especially if you've got a dog that's um, overly sensitive, you can set them back. So I don't want the people to come to that, you know, point where I don't have just checking. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have space in my diary. Um, but then I had all those lovely comments, and I didn't. I didn't. My husband, yeah, he made the comment. Um, he said, "Oh, I've I've had my Facebook cuddle." <laughs> so um, I didn't do that. I didn't put right that there for a Facebook cuddle. I just wanted people to. Um, understand what my prices were and that I can't lower them they they are what they are um I literally I've done it once since I was here and that was April um so it's not like I've suddenly raised my prices they have been like that for, for most of this year um and I hadn't planned on changing changing them um but you have to think, you know, if you are going to pay for somebody that's cheap, I mean, if we're talking cheap, cheap, you know, what, what kind of service do you get? What kind of equipment are they using on your dog? 
are they insured? Um, because, you know, you need to bear that in mind. If it's somebody that's inexperienced doing it for a cheap price, it's maybe because they haven't got all these things in place. Um, and if they have an accident with your with your pet, then they're not covered. So, you know, I mean, if our, our insurance is to cover for anything that we do that we actually cause harm, you know, um, if it's something that they've come with um, or they've got ill health, we can't do anything about that. That's just, that's what you bring to us. But if it's something that we actually, you know, do by accident, then, you know, we are covered by insurance. And also, you know, we've done some kind of first aid along the way um, and learning our animal behaviour and, you know, the more somebody works with your dog, the more safer it's going to be. Um, like, for instance, um, Marvin, <laughs> um, you know, he, he's a potential accident waiting to happen when you're walking around on the table and you've got sharp scissors and sharp equipment you you could possibly have an accident and if you're an inexperienced groomer that's more likely going to happen isn't it so um you know you, sometimes you've got to think a little bit outside as to reason why these people can do it for so cheap you know are they insured have they done any training you know just and don't be afraid to ask the question my insurance is up here i pay it every year um you know it could be an extra 300 pounds that you know for a year to be insured um you know my my experience and, and, and everything like that and I, I understand that we've got to start somewhere and maybe you would start with a bargain price but then your prices are going to have to go up because you're running a business and if you're running a business it's got to pay your wages and not just to pay your wages it's got to pay all your your overheads as a business so you know if it, somebody's ch going to charge me 20 pounds um i would question exactly all those things <laughs> um and you know, if it's a larger business that's charging cheap, cheap prices, I shouldn't think that it would stay cheap for long. And then you would have to keep moving on to somebody's bargain price. They've just started. We call them, we call them groomer hoppers because basically they just hop from one to the other. So their, um, Janine is doing hers for, 25 pounds this week as a special offer of Gaber. Um she's got 25% off um Julie uh, she I'm going to go there. So what happens is your dog just has no idea um where it is. Um this is this is why I like to create what I create because the dogs know where they are and you can build on all that type of behavior. Um, they'll go to somebody else and they'll have a different routine. You know, they'll use a different shampoo. Uh, you know, it, it could have a real allergic reaction to it. I know all the equipment, uh, all the, well, everything's sanitized, but all my shampoos and stuff like that are always geared towards sensitivity. Um, you know, there might be some mild fragrance on some of them, but they're all still sensitive shampoos. Um, this is what you might get with somebody that um, is a little bit more conscientious. Um, but I'm not saying that they're not. And they it might be £15 and it's the best £15 that you've ever spent, you know. Um, but I shouldn't think they'll be paying tax on that. <laughs> so they won't get much of a wage on that. I mean, what's minimum wage now? nine pounds an hour i don't know um so so yeah but it, it is a, a great big minefield um you know uh um like i say um i can only 
um, charge what I charge is because uh, my dogs um, my dogs are coming regularly um, there's no um, I haven't got other people's wages to pay for um, I haven't got rent as such I save a little bit on my merchant services um, my merchant services down at the salon you know when you have one of those machines you pay a monthly um, amount for it you pay rent on it and you pay a bit per transaction so it was like 150 pounds out of what you've earned monthly out of all that you know for a merchant thing so i save that's about all i really save um so yeah and i mean like i say uh, many of the groomers commented that i was uh, reasonable considering my my skill level um i mean it is like i say if i lose one it's not it's not that i um i can lose one i've got plenty of customers that that isn't the issue it, it's how it's all the feelings that that go to that go with it especially when you've groomed a dog for nine years and You've invested so much time and energy um, in in the dog, um, and you do it. It's hard. We try and do it to a really good standard, um, and like I say, for the sakes of what five pounds, three pounds, what it might be. Um, I know my like I said, my hair is ninety five pounds. Uh, I sit still. I don't poo on my uh, hairdresser's floor. I don't wee up in the corners. Um, I don't scratch her face or her chest or try and have a nibble on her fingers. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm a good girl when I sit down in the chair. <laughs> chair. Um, so, but I'd like I say, it's, it's entirely up to the, the customer. It's completely there prerogative um but so you know they're starting over um she'll start over now with a with a strange with a stranger um and it probably will be a cheap cheap groom um so it's like i say if i was to break down the the 50 pounds um two hours so a rate of i, I wrote some notes um 15 to 18 pounds an hour is 36 pounds. Um, my electric is on for 30, 40 minutes, you know, with a, with a hairy, hairy dog. Shampoo equipment, blades. Um, I've, I've got 14 pounds profit. Um, and I don't use cheap shampoo. You know, my shampoos could be 65 pounds a five litre. Um, I'm not using cheap bog standard that are like thirty pounds a pop, um, and when they're not good quality, they don't stretch very far anyway. But um, but I do I do love my job. I, I do love my job, and I don't actually think about the money, if I'm quite honest. Um, but you know, because most most groomers it's um it's a passion it's not about making extra profit that does help and you need to pay your bills um but it's not um i don't have you know a major target to get through to you know it's um yeah, it's, it's a luxury it's a luxury for for the pet owner you know and you know all the things that i know that i and, and other hard-working groomers put into it and then somebody comes along and charges 15 pounds <laughs> it's like that oh, you know um but you, you can't take it personally it, it, it's up to them if they want to do that but they're going to take the risk aren't they um 
they take all the risk and and then I mean I, I used to find that when I very first started my, my business I used to have a lot of the Gruber hoppers that used to come um, and then you'd see them on another dog page you know a couple of months after and you'd be like wow I did a really good job I did a really good job and it, you know his feet were perfect and you know he looked gorgeous and everything like that and then you'll see him on somebody else's page who hasn't been grooming for as long as you and it's not even in the same style or you know what you do recognize <laughs> you do recognize. and you're like my fluff trying was better than that you know but um that it's, it's up to them but it it is um it is what us dog groomers think. Uh, a lot of us actually do talk between us um, because there's a lot of it that, that goes on. Um, we have a lot of people with a bad attitude um, that come and don't respect the hard job that we do. They just want to bring you the dog in whatever condition that they they deem and once it's there left with you they don't really think about you know how it's going to behave or if it's going to be in distress you just you just i'm paying you to do that job and you're like mm. this is why i create a world where all my dogs come and i will keep banging on about it but created a world because i've been through that world where you know you go above and beyond and they'll just ditch you in a heartbeat you know but i wanted to create this world where i'm charging a regular decent price for my skill level and for my overheads and paying whatever i need to pay and um, making sure that i allow for really good you know products maintenance of my products cleaning my products um i invest in the dog's behavior they come regular so they're not getting to the point where they're they're naughty and uncomfortable so then you can build on that behavior you only have to look at milo you know if he's ever come to me if he's gone over his mum's been poorly and his mum will tell you well, we've just gone short again because i'm not gonna compromise his you know his learning and his his behavior just to get some knots out it'll grow and we'll work on it. I'll always put the dog's um, health and well-being first, always. Um, and so this is why I don't do one-off grooms. You know, people do message me all the time. <clears throat> and I do have to say, I'm really sorry, but I don't take new clients. And the reason being is because I've got a hundred and let me tell you um a lot of talking today i'm very sorry if i just go onto my system which does not want to load up i think i know anyway it's let me go on here so customers so i've got 154 customers yeah that includes some cats and some dogs and and some um, owners have multiple animals. So, but then if I go to the actual pets, now I've been through this because I've been updating my uh, system and doing my diary for next year. I went through and then made sure that everybody that's on there is an actual customer on there. So I know that this number is correct. So 175 pets yeah um and i i try to manage those um rather than leaving it up to the customer um you know to ring me message me because when what happens is when they ring me message me i haven't got an appointment so either they have to go elsewhere um or they or they have to wait and the dog's overgrown and it's not a very nice experience so i like to manage everybody that i have 
rather than keep getting new people or having new people. That's enough for me. It's too many, to be honest, really. Um, because some days I'll, you know, I could run over or, you know. Um, but I, it, it's enough for me to manage for now. Um, and then, sadly, when they pass away, either I'll wait for that dog owner to get another dog. I just keep them inactive on my system. Um, and if they don't, then after a while, I can just take that off. Generally, after a year, um, I'll remove them off the system, but they do remain inactive um, so that I've got all their details. But it's generally um, with data protection, you're not allowed to keep them for more than 12 months, you know. So, so yeah, that, that is where I'm at. <clears throat> and it just give you know, like you can be a dog groomer that's like working your socks off and you get the burnout because you're giving so much of your time and your energy um for me it's more of a mental so i am giving my time and my energy and everything like that um but i'm also giving it in a mental capacity because i put so much mental energy into it and it sort of has a little bit and it and it's like Sometimes you just have to take a little bit of a step back and have a breather. Um, and I appreciate that this channel isn't for everybody. And I do apologize about the sound. The sound is what it is, unfortunately. Um, I'm sorry if some people are having issues with the sound. Um, I've got a new microphone coming. So it works pretty much the same, but we'll see if it's any better. But other than that, it, it is what it is. I've got a little iPhone. Um, I don't get paid for the channel. Um, I will never be sponsored by anybody. I am independent. So if anybody wanted to give me a product to give for me to give my honest opinion, then that is what I would do. Um, I not uh, I did try once to be and what do you call them? Uh, uh, like an advocate for a certain company uh, but they weren't interested in me I think it's maybe because I'm a little bit rogue and I am an overthinker I am a people pleaser I am overly giving of information uh, I can't remember what that's called um oversharer I'm an oversharer <laughs> um and uh yeah maybe just not everybody's cup of tea well that, that's okay um but yeah that's just where i'm up to at the moment so you know what dogs that i'm doing um you know the reason why i've just took a little bit of a break and it's more of a just a mental capacity you know really it sort of chips on you because you you can't i think it it's in our um nature to take things personally especially when you put so much love and care and attention and you know your, your personal energy um i did actually think that maybe i should go and work in a bar or something like that so i can go home serve people and just leave at the end of the day um but no i do love this so much but you know, if I ever did come to that, then that is what I will do. I will go and work in a bar. <laughs> I love working in a bar. And um, I'll just be that friendly person. There you go. So anyway, um, and if, you, if you're if you a groomer and you have issues, you know, with you know tell me in the comments we can talk about it more i don't mind um it is a it, it is a really um big conversation in our industry um i mean some people do talk about it in a little bit of a more professional way and they do help you to understand that you know you forget that you've only just started or whatever you are a business and you need to charge what you need to charge and if 
you, if people can't afford it, then they'll go to the next one. But you will build up customers such as myself who are happy with the price that they're paying, the service that you give. Um, and if a few leave or whatever, try not to take it personally. Yeah, Wendy, try not to take it too personally. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, that was Monday's post. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do this week. If you've got any um, anything that you would like me to cover, please do put your comments. Give me your worries about you know your, your charges and your everything that you know. It, it may not be. I, I haven't seen many people in the US talk about their issues with prices. Um, but I know in the UK, it is a big topic. Um, in the in the big topics of conversation in our industry is matted dogs. And correct me if I'm wrong, there might be a lot more. Matted dogs, getting customers to come regular to avoid the, the matting, getting them to understand. Things like you might see um, on some of the dog forums for, for pet owners. Um, look what they've done to my dog. And it was all hairy. And there's a picture of it nice and hairy. And there's a picture of it naked. And you know as a dog groomer you're thinking, yeah, it's not naked because of the dog groomer. The dog groomer just did what it needed to do. You neglected your dog, so. And we are always, we say that the only reason that we do it short there is two reasons, if we've been asked to, or we have to, you know? Unless you're one of those groomers that just likes to shave everybody, you know? Maybe you are. Um, but it's not a very good advertisement, yeah. So all that kind of thing. Customers' attitudes towards us, you know, because they've not quite understood what we're trying to create um, and price, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, give me your thoughts. I'm on to my next cat now. And um, obviously, I love you all. And if any of my customers watch and they get to the end of this video, you know that I love you all. And, you know, it's completely your prerogative what you do you know what i create here and you know that i look after your dogs as to the best of my ability so anyway bye for now take care have a great week and i'll see you through the week bye for now and p.s i now have an exercise bike i put it up there and i'm quite enjoying it mm -hmm.